Hey, so I've been getting questions from some about gold recovery off of a motherboard. Um, a lot of questions centered around what do I take? What do I keep? Why? So today I'm going to show how I take a motherboard apart and what I'm looking for when I'm taking components off. So let's get into it and uh, I'll show you what I do and what I keep and why. I'm after the chips and the pins. However, uh, some chips are not gonna be worth your time. You will find copper, like these EMIs right here. Um, this one, I've left the, the heat sink on. So this one's got some aluminum. Where do we start? Let's look at a board that I haven't touched yet. This guy right here, nothing has been taken off of it. Whereas some of these other boards have already done some stuff. So, um, sometimes it helps to do a little bit of prep work. The, the prep work that I like to do is to get these plastic jackets off of the pins. Um, they'll get in your way in the next step. So let's, let's go ahead and start working on getting these off. These PCI slots have these white, well, they'd be whatever color the, the, the plastic is, because here's brown ones. But these pins are just toggle pins that help lock the, the plastic in place. So as you're, as you're inserting and removing cards from the slots, you don't move the plastic around a whole lot. So I like to push it forward until it's, I hear it pop. And sometimes it'll just let go at that point, which this one did not. So then I have to pull it back. And this might be easier if you turn the board and just push it again. So grab that and push until you hear it pop. And then it just wiggles free. And there are, well, a few of the pins came off on this one, but that's okay. So they're, they're very small little pins and I can finish getting those pins out later, but you'll see that the majority of pins are still on the board. So what I'll do is I'll, just move on to the next one. And believe me, this, this step will make the next step super easy. Because the pins, when they're isolated, will just fall off the board with the heat. And I'm going to cook them in my little toaster oven over here. Ah, that one came off clean. Not a single pin in there. Okay. So there really is not gonna be a whole lot of gold on these, but there's, there's hundreds of pins. So it'll all add up. Just a matter of getting them all off. One person once asked me, well, why don't you just clip them all off? Well, one, when you start clipping them, they start going everywhere. Two, once you get a whole row clipped and you move on to the next row, you've got a whole lot of sharp edges that just are gonna be in your way as you keep moving across the board. Next, the RAM slots. I might just move on and show you these. These are actually pretty easy and I like I like the pins on these better. These are IDE and your your floppy drive pins. They're, they're square pins, they're really short and they're very firm, which makes it easy for them to stay in place while you're trying to pull these off. So if we get the, the flat screwdriver down underneath, you can see how it lifts up pretty nice. So then we just lift the other side there there we go then you're left with this this little rectangular housing where the square pins would have fit and all the square pins are still there what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cook it and there's a magic temperature and I really don't know it 
The temperature has varied based on the different solders that are on, on boards. Um, I have succeeded with some boards down around 350 and then other boards take forever and some things don't fall off. I've just gotten into the habit of just putting it at its highest setting, which is 450. Um, it's a broil setting at 450, which, which will get everything to liquefy. All the solder will liquefy. Um, one thing that you might want to do is take all the jumpers off. There are these little pin bridges. They have little gold traces in there too, so you'll want them anyway. But what they do is as the plastic heats up, some plastics are not very tolerant to this and they will start to melt and reshape. It'll make the pins underneath really difficult to become free of the plastic. Now, as we take it out, it's gonna cool down pretty fast because the outside air temperature is gonna cool it and it's only about 30 degrees outside today. So, and that's Fahrenheit, not Celsius. So when we take it out, we have to act fast or everything's gonna just bind back up. Drop it. Nice. This is what I was talking about. The pins that were freed of the plastic have all let go and are now in the pan or in my sorting pile. But everything that these plastic pieces are still touching, they're still all here. Now, yes, some other pins are still here too, but my experience is if these plastic pieces are still on the motherboard, you will not get the pins to drop this way. Just my, my observation. So I, I highly recommend taking these plastic pieces off prior to heating it up. This is that BGA that I really like. This is so cool. This is a nice little Intel. It's about an inch or two or three centimeters. Um, but uh, let me show you what I do with these. So the way to take these apart, this is so cool. I just grab it on the green board and twist and it lets go. I turn it 90 degrees and I do it again. And I just do that until all sides have let go. And usually after the third side is enough, but I'll just show you four sides. Then once the fourth side is done, it's let go. All the gold that you're gonna recover out of these chips is gonna be in this flat black piece. It looks like there's little gold traces here and they are, but they're so low quality, so thin, they're not really worth it. And you have to fight against all this tin, all this lead, all this extra stuff that's in the solder balls. We're gonna start you one last time. And we'll get what's in there out in just a second. But yeah, you could discard this if you really wanted to, or you can save it until you have a whole bunch of these to process, but there's really not gonna be much in here. But now we have this piece. This piece is going to only have gold and copper. So you'll put it through a sulfuric acid bath and then it will take off all of the black hard enamel here, this epoxy, this resin, and it will leave you with a network of gold and copper leads. And then you can do your, your um, your nitric acid bath and take the copper off and then you take everything else and you put it in your aqua regia and you've got pure gold so i've got these old pretzel barrels that i i love pretzels <laughs> but i've got all these old pretzel barrels that i'll dump everything into when they're cool enough so that way i can sort them later Okay, so there's all of our pins from one motherboard. Okay, I put a second board in. We're gonna let that run while I show you this. And I wanted to show you how easy some of these RAM slots really should be. You just put the screwdriver down 
and you just just separate them a little bit. By separating them just the slightest amount here, you're actually going to be able to just peel it right up. This one is turning out to be practically a perfect example. So then it's that easy. I don't know why that other board was such a pain in the neck, but it was. So, and when, when they're so close together like that, it practically makes the other, the other half, the other, the second pair, the second of the pairing practically done too. So, I mean, <laughs> it's so easy. It makes me crazy that that first example was so terrible. You can see these rubber feet are just cooking terribly. But I can still hear pins dropping, so that's good. All right, we'll put this back in, but look at this, this nice collection we've got. All right, so what do we have here? That is so exciting. That is not. That's nice too. All right, so what we have, let me bring you in closer. What we have, we have one of these BGAs with the gold corner and a BGA without. So right there, that is a nice square. And there's another one and that one fused onto that guy. But these, these are what I like to see. These are the pins that are square uh, for your IDE and for your floppy drives. And they are such a, a nice color, a nice thickness of, of uh, gold plating on them. And they're long, they're rigid, and they, they have four sides. And almost every single time, the gold plating will be on all four sides. And here's a nice example of one of these. Well, there's another one, a bigger one. You can see that. It's one of those those pin arrays. I don't know how best to explain it other than it's just a whole bunch of pins stuck together with the plastic piece. But then you see all these little these little scraps. These little scraps have got such a light dusting of gold on them and there's a lot of material that that has to be eaten away by the acids and stuff. So in general, yeah. Those pins are gonna be low grade, low quality, but yeah, they all add up. Really what I'm after are pins like these square pins from your from your IDE controllers and your floppy drive controllers and uh, the chips that fall off your BGAs. Let's see what in the world this is. This is a power regulator, this is a power piece. Oh, that was a good drop. I think that was the CPU slot that just fell off in the in the oven there. But yeah, you'll see you'll see a lot of extra stuff fall. For the most part, it's useless. But yeah, ah, it's a junk piece of junk. But whatever, everything is good, I guess. Okay. Well, it's really not that hard. It just is a little bit of time-consuming uh, effort to get everything set up, and then. You smell like burned plastic for the next little bit, but uh, just wash up and be done. Five motherboards gave me roughly a pound and a half to two pounds of material. That was all the metals, all the plastics. Um, I pulled all of that apart and isolated just the pins and the pins alone, it gave me about 200 grams of pins. So five motherboards is 200 grams of pins. Um, I, I don't really have any good numbers for how much gold that would be. It depends on a lot of things. It depends on the age of the motherboard. It depends on the quality of the motherboard, the manufacturer, how many different sets of RAM or IDE or other types of pins there were, what kind of processor slot was there? Was it a pin or pinless slot um, socket? I mean, there's so many different things. So the rough estimate that I've seen research-wise, um, about a kilogram of pins, of miscellaneous pins, will give you 0.6 grams of gold. So if my estimations are correct, 
that five motherboards gives you 200 pins, then you would need 25 motherboards to get a kilogram of pins. So really cool. I've got plans to do my first giveaway. I've got some copper that I'm gonna melt down. Um, I've also got some brass that I'm gonna do, but I'm waiting for a new crucible to come so I can do the brass. But I'd like to do this giveaway in the next week or two, and uh, it's gonna be some copper bars. So for now, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.